What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Basement Show. Cheese, Ramon, myself, and a full week's worth of comic reviews for you. What do we got this week? Dark Horses, Hidden Society, and Tomorrow. From DC, we got Amethyst and Leviathan Dawn. From Magnetic Comics, we've got Nils the Elementals and Rise of the Zellfire. Marvel gives us 2020 Force Works, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Fantastic Four, Grim Noir, Giant Size X-Men, Jean Grey, and Emma Frost. From Vault Comics, we've got Finger Guns, and Xenoscope's got Conspiracy Area 51. All right. Cheese was kind enough to bring over the Jameson Cold Brew. Mm. Now, I wasn't sure about this. This is Jameson Irish Whiskey infused with natural cold brew coffee flavor. Mm. Let me tell you, there's a reason we're drinking this shit out of coffee mugs. Because this tastes straight up like I brewed a pot of coffee and then poured a shot of two or uh, seven of Jameson well. into it. Yep. And honestly, it tastes pretty damn good. It's really fucking good. Yeah. It's surprisingly smooth. You know, the coffee flavor isn't overpowering. Um, you definitely get the alcohol for sure, but it doesn't burn. At and it's all. it's uh, less. It's twenty percent less than your average yeah. uh, bottle of Jameson, which is a forty proof. Uh, eighty proof. Forty percent, eighty proof. This is thirty percent, sixty proof. Yeah. Uh, but yo, it's really good. I expected far, far worse of this. Mm, so did I. And if you're not following us on Instagram, that's where the initial post was. Yo, it's really good. Thanks, cuz. Anytime. Now, I am not sure about the caffeine content, but I will let y'all know when I go to bed. We did a great interview with the creator of Snow White Zombie Apocalypse, Brent Lengel. Yeah, this dude was so awesome. He's a black belt in Kyokushin. He's a New York playwright. He's obviously fucking hilarious having written Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. Yes. And he's also like a wilderness survival guide. One of, of the top tiers on the Kickstarter is he'll take you on a fucking tour of Iceland. Ooh. Yo, this shit is okay. awesome. And you could split it between your friends. Like, because, you know, it's a little pricey. It's the top tier, obviously. Yeah. Mm. But, like, we could all split it and go on a tour of Iceland. With him, it's a pretty cool idea, and it doesn't seem Iceland to be a limit. So, if you guys want to do it, yo, yeah, I've known a lot of people that have gone to Iceland and it looks like it's amazing and you have to go, yeah, like that's fucking crazy. But, I dig it. Point is, the basement has chimed in on Brent's Kickstarter for Swaza, that's his the little acronym for it, which I appreciate because typing out Snow White Zombie Apocalypse gets a little annoying every fuck time, yeah. Some people will deal with those, yeah, now, that's not that bad. Unlike John Carpenter's Tales of Science Fiction, blah, blah, blah. Etc. title. Right. So I still like that book, Redhead, though. That was oh, no, no, no. I like the books. The Basement chimed right. in, and uh, we're going to be zombies in a future book. It's going to be great. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and I highly encourage you all to chime in if you can. The Kickstarter link is on our Facebook. Uh, it should be on our Twitter as well. So go and find it, go and check it out, or just go on Kickstarter and search Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. I highly recommend it, and make sure you check out the interview with myself and Brent on YouTube right now. Subscribe to The Basement YouTube. Uh, we really appreciate the follows, we appreciate the comments and the likes and everything. And thank you to everybody who commented from episode 8, which got posted right in the interim between the newsletter... The episode, and then the next newsletter and episode. Because we've been doubling up in order to get to episode 13 by Friday the 13th. So we had a bit of an extra episode. There was the episode with the crew from Fantasy Free For All that did not go live. And that went up. And then I believe it was myself, Red, and Greg. That went live. And then that shit went up. That was episode 8. Did The link did not get included in the... In the newsletter, but it's up there. And thank you to Mr. Fix It Comics who said, uh, Does anyone else get Rosario Dawson vibes with female Dodge? And as a matter of fact, my friend said exactly that. Like, yo, she looks like Rosario Dawson. I didn't see it until I looked her up, and then, like, for especially for Men in Black 2, and then I compared okay, yeah. her. Younger, slimmer one, yeah. yeah. Dodge is hot. She She's is. Ridiculous. Yeah. I'd give her the keys just because I'm stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we will have our lock and key review <laughs> Monday live. 
We're going live. We're going to do the review. It is a spoiler-ridden review. You've had two weeks to watch the show, read the books, in whatever order you wanted to do that in. Now it's time. Me and Ramon's going to do this, and we're going to do it right. And thank you to Ace Hardy, who commented two emojis, a book and a 100, which I'm pretty sure means y'all know what you're talking about. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Ace. Comments. Chillmonger said, 5G is ridiculous. Removing Bruce Wayne Batman is pure stupidity. Absolutely. fucking lootly And that's just the tip of the fucking iceberg. We talked about DC's 5G plan, and uh, my only hope is that with Dan Didio now gone, after we filmed that episode, Dan Didio got fired the next day. So there was no talk about that. Because, mm. you know, he was working right up until, like, Friday afternoon, and then all of a sudden, he was history. So maybe, just maybe, being that Scott Snyder was so against the 5G shit and he's like the star Batman writer, maybe it's not going to happen. Let's maybe hope. they'll actually use their fucking heads. Because aside from the fact that like Marvel tried this with phasing out their old characters and bringing in new ones, whether diverse or not, nobody cares about that. People just want their characters, the ones that they grew up with knowing yes. and loving. Yes. If, if you want to make cool, diverse characters, just make cool, new, diverse characters. It's yeah. been done. I it mean, worked. Marvel, Marvel's been doing that to some success with with the diversity that they've been showing. Listen, and Marvel Ms. Marvel, Miles Morales, that. it can work. Sure. I'm not going to say that because every single character characters. you make just because they're diverse is going to work and it needs to work. No. Some so of they're... them are going to fail. But think <clears throat> how much Marvel failed with characters back in the day. Characters we don't see no more, you know? Like in the Old West comics and shit like that. The characters that work will stay. Work. Miles Morales, fucking Ms. Great Marvel, yeah. even Riri Williams. She's still around. If you want to do it, just do what um they've done before. Uh, Superman led to John Steele. Right. Yeah. Uh, Batman has a slew of characters. Yeah. Asian, female lesbians, uh, black... It's the whole Green Batman. Lantern brought in John Stewart. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's even a Muslim one now, <clears throat> and a Latina. Fantastic. So it's like yeah. you have you the can tools. do it. You yeah. have the power. Yeah, you got Rob, and then you got Robbie Reyes as you know as Ghost Rider, which yeah. I a lot of people shit on him. I think he's great. I, I First of all, yeah. Ghost Rider in a goddamn '69 Charger. I'm all fucking for up. it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Fuck. <clears throat> And Kamala Khan is is still interesting enough. Like, it doesn't matter what her heritage is. She's still an interesting enough character. Right. And her power set is interesting enough I wish, enough actually, that she had a different attention. code name than Ms. Marvel. Because, it, yeah. to me, she's, like, sharing a very confusing spotlight with Captain Marvel. Right. She, I think she deserves her own cool-ass code name because her powers are totally different. Yeah. I'd, I'd welcome that. That'd be a good thing to do in, like, an event. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give this girl a worthwhile... Superhero name. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Batfan01 said, Punchline's first full appearance is actually in Hell Arisen, and the price is ridiculous at the moment. Thank you, sir. I mistakenly said last week, unknowingly, that, hey, uh, everybody should secure their copies of Batman 89 since she, or Batman 90, since she appeared in the recent issue of mm -hmm. Batman. Her first full appearance was this week in Hell Arisen 3. And it's been sold out everywhere <clears throat> across New York City of course. since like 9 a.m. yesterday. Ridiculous. <clears throat> First of all, the eBay prices are fucking ridiculous. People charging 50 bucks for a $3, $4 cover price book. Please do not buy into this. The f it, right now, all you're seeing in the aftermarket is monkey see, monkey do. People spending ludicrous amounts of money... On a book that is destined to go back down. First of all, I'll laugh my balls off if they kill her in a few weeks. Yep, I would love for possible. that to happen. It is very possible. It's entirely, very possible. Entirely possible. Especially with what's going on with Harley and the Birds of Prey. And the second thing is, at this point, if you really must dive into this collector's pool filled with piranha, do not buy a raw book for the 50 bucks. Because you don't want to have to deal with the promise from your eBay seller that this is a 9.8. And then you got to send the shit to the CGC and you get a 9.2. Mm -hmm. And then you got to hunt the motherfucker down and kick him in the balls. Mm -hmm. Not worth it. Spend the if you If you absolutely must get into this now, and I'm suggesting you wait, 
But if you must get into it now, spend the money on a guaranteed 9.8 because at this point, if the seller does not deliver, now you can get your money back. Yep. They get that fucking 9.8 for 150 or 180 bucks, which give or take is maybe 40 to 50 dollars more than you would normally pay for any average new 9.8 book. So just in case this book does go up a little bit, let's say it goes up where it is now, and then some shit happens, nobody gives a fuck anymore, which is almost destined to happen. I'm not saying guaranteed, but it's almost destiny. And then the book levels out somewhere in the middle. If you bought that 9.8 for like a buck fifty, you didn't lose no money. Because that's what the shit's going to run you no matter what. Mm-hmm. That's the average price of any new book 9.8. Mm-hmm. Unless the book is really tanking and nobody gives a shit and they want to just make some money back. And they try to sell the shit for like a hundred. That's not going to happen with this book. I could guarantee that much at least. It's going to level out somewhere. I think it's going to be around a 20 to $25 range. So I'm telling you don't spend 50 9.8s are always a good investment. So if you got to invest, take the capital and invest correctly. Get the 9.8 and hold on to the shit. Then that's all we have to say about Hell of Risen 3. Honestly, I, I read it, I looked it over, and it's really nothing special. No, it's just... It's and mad. it's almost like Harley Volume 2. It's just... Oh, and, what, and what did I say? Y'all were going to be disappointed? Mm-hmm. I didn't read it. I said it, I said it yesterday, I think. I, I knew better. Than did you peruse better. at least? No. Oh. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait till that that event book is over. Then I'll okay. Read, and I'll be like, okay, it's garbage. Fair. Because that's what I expect from it. Mm. And you know, I had uh, a lot of high hopes for that because the Hell of Risen was all tied in with uh, the the Batman, uh, the Batman the left stuff, shit. Yeah. 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 So I'll, I'll read it when it's done. I'm just like, I, there's a lot of side stories and all kinds of stuff going on. A lot of tie-ins, issues, and whatnot. So a little hard to keep up at this point. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Whiskey Quest, they should have done a Batman Beyond movie with Robert Pattinson as Terry. DC needs to get their act together. 100% Robert Pattinson would have made an absolutely great Terry McGinnis. That said, I am still, in light of all the new pictures and everything... I'm optimistic. And the stunt double pictures and whatnot. uh, Apparently there was also a video of Robert Pattinson trying to ride the motorcycle and he fell over. I don't know if that was him. I don't imagine it's a stunt double. So... Probably was him, but I can't talk shit because I've never ridden a motorcycle in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been on the back of one, but I ain't never driven one. So, I don't know. Yeah? So, no talking shit there. I'm remaining cautiously optimistic about this movie. I'm going to see it in the, in the mean, theaters. See, seeing the uh, seeing the cast surrounding him, too, has yeah, me And he got mad jacked for this film. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, good luck to you. All right? Like, let's make it good. Hopefully it's good. Yeah. Ugh. And last but not least, John Doe, if that is your real name, sir, or madam, said, good for Ramon not being a drunk. I'm not sure if you were complimenting Ramon or trying hard to insult me. If you were complimenting Ramon, good for you. If you were trying to insult me, keep trying. Do better. That one failed. I am a drunk. I enjoy being a drunk. I am not an alcoholic. Alcoholics go to meetings. Being drunk just means I fucking hate reality. Like you probably do too, for not using your real name and trying to throw these fucking little zingers out there. Your daddy was probably a drunk because he saw you when you were born and you were a fucking ugly bastard. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Your mother couldn't give a blowjob to fucking save her life, so he left. And you blame that on alcohol when you should, in fact, be blaming it on your fucking mirror image. You loser. Thanks for watching. Cuz, refill me. <laughs> Do it. Keep fucking trying, asshole. That's how you throw fucking zingers. So, along with Dan Didio getting fired last week, which kind of leaves everybody wondering what's up with DC Comics, mm. uh, Adrian Berg had another interesting point to make. Uh, we were talking this week. He said Marvel's probably not going to be the one to lease out the characters because along with leasing out the characters... Mm-hmm. I believe you made this point as well. They would want to get rights to the toys and other sorts of distribution. Yes. And at and not going to give that up. No. They're just going to lease out the characters for the comics. Yeah. And Disney's greedy. We know this. Yes. So they're going to want more for more bang yeah. for their buck. They're going to want toys and mm. animation rights and 
movie rights and things like merchandising, that. Merchandising, merchandising. And they're probably not going to get that. Nope. Probably so not. at this point, uh, we would probably be seeing a lot more DC crossovers with companies like IDW, Dynamite, for whatever reason. No, IDW's having financial issues. Remember, with Winona Ryder, they can't. They were supporting that. I was not that. aware, actually. What's up, Winona Ryder? Yeah. You mean? Uh, no, Ryder. Uh, Winona Earp. Winona Earp. They were supporting. They were paying for that. Right. It hasn't come back because they're tight with funds. No way. Um, the okay. see, the comic book or the 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 show. Or the either one. IDW is tight with funds. Period. Uh huh. So they took back. They're not bothering. Wow. So IDW's got a lot of fucking eighties properties right now. So yeah. I wonder where that would go if that falls under. Yep. I did not know that. Interesting. But right now we do have a crossover to look forward to. First of all, first of all, uh, there has been talk of potential crossovers with Thor. And the new gods. If you look at Thor issue two, yes. there are allusions, of the big allusions three. with an A, not I, to the new gods, to Orion, etc., to the potential the the Black Winter. What is it called? The something Forever yeah, Winter. Yeah. Uh-huh. That this is Dark Side coming into this universe. It's. I think they're just teasing. Um, Marvel and they think they're t- you know making allusions to the JLA and everything. Yeah. Apparently, in the last issue of Doomsday Clock, which I have not read and I'm not anxious to start reading again, there was a, a reference to Thor fighting the Hulk. In uh, the <laughs> Wally West-led book, Flash Forward, uh-huh. um, they, he's going from multiverse to multiverse. So they have this parody of the Avengers and the X-Men in it. Uh-huh. And it is like so spot on, except for the name, the twist name. Of course. It's like, damn. What are you doing? They're not even really trying. Interesting. No. So yeah, we're uh, we're not sure where any of this is going, but there is a an absolute crossover with Lock and Key and Sandman. Interesting. It is. Uh, I I don't. Of see all of the DC but, properties right. that would have to cross over with what would probably be now my favorite series. Thank you, Ramon. Um. Yeah, I think Sandman would be the one to work. If they get like a dream key or something like that, they either find one or There's Tyler makes keys. one or After something. Reading the first volume again, I was like... Also, very happy with this. And I don't absolutely need a first uh, cut of this. They are remaking the keys from the convention exclusives. Ooh. Now, the convention exclusives are stupid expensive. They're about 200 bucks, give or take. Yeah. The new ones, uh, if you go on the actual website... Are like twenty five bucks. Ooh. I could definitely do well with a second print key. I just want the Omega key and the Anywhere key. I think right. I could do well with that. I don't think I need all of them. I just need like the major ones. He says it now. Once he no, don't believe him. Gonna it's gonna be like the keys. it's gonna be like the pop addiction. You mm. get you get one. You I get hope one not. All. I hope not. The <clears throat> pop addiction is something I'm really trying to work with. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see how well it's you working don't for see, you. But... <laughs> Stage right. There are others that are not yet displayed. Soon. Oh wow! Yeah. There's Iron Maiden. Yeah. There's Kel- some Spider-Man ones. Yeah, Kelly, I'm gonna have to steal Honestly, one for you. And, uh, a quick count. There's at least thirty over there. No. Yes. There's a tower right there of three. So six, one, two, that's twelve, that's six, 24. eighteen, twenty-four. You got the Zoltan so machine. There's there. You got five more there. Yeah. That's yeah, and then there's another one behind that. Maybe one. there's like twenty-five. Nope. That, that tower alone is 24. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any more right here somewhere? Speaking so, of crossover next week. Oh, what do we got? Chew and Out of Darkness. No way. Oh, I should catch up on Out of Darkness then. Yeah, I know how to do that too. Oh my God. What if they go to the planet where the fucking chicken thing is from? Ooh. Holy shit. I gotta catch up on Outer Darkness. That's yes, my mission for this week. Yeah. Oh man. Wait, now you've made your haul already. It's only fucking Thursday, bro. I finished my reading early today. You're the worst. You're the best, but you're the worst. Yeah, I know. Like you make me feel guilty for being the worst. That's why you're the worst. So Bob Iger retired. Disney CEO yeah. stepped the fuck down, just like I'm done. I'm curious to see he's, the package. He's got. still You'll he's never still, see it. the retirement package. Oh yeah. man, well, he's still staying on, and he's still yeah. director of creative. Uh-huh. 
with Disney. So he's not actually leaving the company. Yeah. But he is stepping down as CEO. Mm -hmm. So he's taking a smaller role, probably just for the paycheck at this point. Like, but he's, he's yeah, willingly stepping down. It's yeah. not like he's being demoted or anything. No. This was his decision. Yep. All right. Dark Horse's Hidden Society from artist Raphael Albuquerque. I know that's not how you say his name, but that's how I say his name. I don't know how to pronounce his name in Spanish. I don't... I, it, I don't know Rafael. As far as I'm concerned, it's Albuquerque. Yeah. Me this too. is the dude that drew that really infamous ba uh, Joker Batgirl cover that was deemed a little too rapey for comics. He's also the one that did um, American <clears throat> Vampire. Yes. That was a good series. That was a great series, Damn. man. That just, like, fell off. Like, that never just ended or anything. They did a bunch of stuff in the yeah. far future, in the past... And then they're like, okay, that's it. We're, we're done. I thought I recognized the art style. I forgot about that one. So this is basically a bunch of people experiencing magic. Some for the first time. Some didn't know it actually existed. Mm -hmm. And all with, uh, I guess I'll just make the comparison of it. There's this wizard who's kind of like the Zordon of the crew. Yeah. Who's bringing everybody together. Mm. Yeah. And they're like, there's kind of weird names. There's kind Arlu, of like the way and Gandalf works. Zulu, mm -hmm. Ulu, whatever the fuck their names yeah. are. Yeah. Which character interested you? Uh, I was really interested in the two guys getting swindled by the guy with the cards up his sleeve. Uh -huh. yeah. And like, if that was me, and this dude's like, oh, listen, I wasn't cheating, and he shows like his fucking gun. Like, oh, all right. I'll just walk past you, casually grab a fucking chair and crack it over your fucking head. You just showed me a fucking gun like you're threatening my life. Now I'm gonna now I have carte blanche to kill you. Yeah. I'm gonna crack a fucking chair over your head and then I'm gonna stab you in the fucking neck with one of the legs of the chair. You show a fucking gun on me? Tupac said that shit best. Pull your strap on me, motherfucker, you better kill me. I asked you which character interested you the most, and you go on a mini rants about death. So, I mean, I felt the most in touch with these guys who lost their bet to a guy who was cheating. But they're our uh, main characters, they're, aren't they? They're not at all. They're just two nope. guys. that I Not at all. And that guy got his just <laughs> desserts from this girl, Mercy. That's my favorite Who guy. stole yes. his soul. Her and that book she has. Yeah. Yeah. You're very interested in that. Yeah. And I knew She's kind of like be. a magical yeah. Jessica Jones. I'm very yeah. interested I'm like, in... I like the kid, yo. The kid's the kid, interesting. The, yeah, yeah, the kid is interesting as the hell The kid too. is a fucking David Copperfield, and all of a sudden he's pulling up real magic tricks. Yeah. And uh, his grandfather is ver what was very good friends with the guy who was bringing them all together. Made yeah, the Brooklyn Bridge disappear. Couldn't bring it back. Yep. Oops. <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, no, it's a bridge. People use that every day. <laughs> you know, the mayor's coming down? Like, yeah, no, the bridge is gone. It's like, you're gone. in deep shit, motherfucker. Yeah, bridge is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you got this blind girl who has a little fucking charm that summons a Mr. Mixelplick kind of goat demon thing. Yeah. yeah. I like him a lot, too. He's a fine little thing. Yes, yeah. he is. He's, yeah, no, like, I would, <laughs> it would be wonderful. Like, if he, if I controlled him... Like, we would see eye to eye on a lot of shit. She's like, you're robbing them? Like, yeah, bitch, shut the fuck up with your blind, stupid ass. <laughs> you can't see shit. Go braille some shit over there while I fucking take some shit. <laughs> These motherfuckers was trying to rob you. They get knocked out. They get rolled. That's how Brooklyn works. <laughs> That's true. All Brooklyn works that way. Yeah. You Facts. fuck with me. You got fucked. You got rolled. Done. Sometimes, understand some shit. Sometimes you get Rick rolled. <laughs> I got nothing for that. <laughs> I had to bring it back somehow. This is what happens for the record when we mix coffee and whiskey together. Never again. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm buying a bottle every week. Many no, times. I, no, again. I can't. I don't have the budget for that. Um, but it's good, so now I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! I know I could count on it. <laughs> I did that twice at work this week. <laughs> Yo, this was really cool. Yeah, I like this I'm a it. lot. 
And the cool uh, thing is, is that it, it was the first issue where it was all set up. There's no yeah, introduction yeah. of the main plot yet. No, there's no Which enemy. I'm, there's no nothing. It's just everybody's it's getting like, gathered. Yeah, it's like okay, we got the band together. What's the first gig? And what yeah, I thought Mercy was gonna be the bad guy Me until too. like so did I. And then she 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 pulls up with the gun drawn like, and he's like, oh, our last member just arrived. How you doing? Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, boom. It's like, so fucking. It's like good. you can put your gun down, honey. You don't. You won't need that here. Like actually, that would be the dopest thing if he actually if like the very first panel of the second issue is him actually saying that, and then he just kind of like dismantles the gun right before. Her I'm eyes. expecting a magical gun. Because if she could do what she did to well, the car dealer uh-huh. without a gun, with like some Ghost Rider penance there type shit, yeah. yeah, yeah, and she basically pulled a piece off that guy, uh-huh. which is cool. I like it. I dig it. Which is why I like. Which is why I got the Jessica Jones vibe from her, fucking leather biker jacket, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. kind of keeping it to herself. Just wants to have a drink. Fucks this dude up. Dark Horse is tomorrow. If that's not a mirror of what could potentially be fucking society, mm. I don't know what is. Yeah. It's a really interesting take on it, too. Yo. Yeah. Like, Shit is fucked up. You don't see a lot of original stuff. But it's, it's, a like... real, it's a real life application of the anti-life equation in, on, in DC's... You're, yes, that, you're yeah. right. Yeah. In DC's. Yeah. Wow, I didn't think of that. These people are fucking looking at their phones, their the internet, computer, and then they're dying. They they figure Mimetic. it out. The what? Mimetic. Mimetic. Me 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 me. That book did something. Like Stuart this. Eminem. Mamet. Yeah, yeah. No, that yeah. fucked people up. Yeah. This book's fucking people up. I I love they, I love the way the the IT guy explains. It's like it, it's a computer virus that learned to jump species. But how? Like, like yeah. you better have a good explanation for that for right. me. Right. It, it, like, and I think I think eventually it's going to come around to either be alien technology or somebody figured out how to. Weaponize I would it. have accepted more so like at, at, expecting a <clears throat> explanation within the first issue, which I guess I should not have. Mm. I would have accepted <laughs> some sort of like strobe light effect that just fucks your brain up, gives you like makes you stroke out and mm. shit, you know? Okay. Shut your brain down. Right. Because your brain is nothing but a bunch of light synapses and everything anyway. So sure. it could still, stand to reason. Yeah, I mean we still don't actually know the inner workings of how our brain right. truly does. So, but operate. basically if we like, did, we would actually the be able way to this, this virus works is there's a been a computer virus that the United States government has been aware of for quite some time, and their their head IT guys have been aware of, and now all of a sudden, it seems to have, like you said, jumped species where it's infecting people. Well, yeah, a and computer virus designed by Russian hackers yep. is now has now jumped species and, and is infecting completely people. Fucking out of hand. Yeah, and it's it's completely just it's a pandemic. Yeah, and now you have. The different stars of the comic from this IT guy who now has to take care of his two kids because their mother just, she wigged out while driving. It them. was, that was messed up. I was like, yeah. damn. Yeah, she yeah. like, she literally stroked out like just car, saying some shit that did not make sense. And then all of a sudden she's dead and crashed the car. Yeah. And this kid who is uh, some form of autistic uh, kid, yeah. Where he the he doesn't yeah. display emotions correctly, yes. or at least not correctly, but in a traditional he doesn't fashion, process emotions. Normally. He yeah. uh, he's playing the cello for his college entrance exam for like a scholarship or some shit, and he looks up and oh, all of my would be professors are fucking dead, and I walk out, my mother. and then my mother's dead. What the fuck? And yeah. I call my sister. Who faked a, an illness to get out of having to come to New York mm-hmm. for this? Uh, she's well, but hey, uh, shit's not going well, and boop, line goes dead. Now we think she's dead. Yeah. So what the fuck is going on? I'm enjoying yeah. What in really is going the fuck on? This is a straight up pandemic that is affecting everyone, and we're still not even sure how. Yeah. And. Here we are in this day and age with the fucking coronavirus, which apparently everybody is fucking worried about. And I'm not getting into all of my conspiracy theories that oh, I've heard about this. God. You're <laughs> fucking welcome. I'm just trying to save your fucking life. 
a fucking computer virus that apparently we can catch by looking at it through the internet. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. It's fucking deceased. Yeah. And Good book, though. Yeah. Yeah. This is my book of the week. Really? All right, question. All right. Loved it. This There was a lot of good shit this week, but this one, I, I was not expecting to like this as much as I did, if I that agree makes with sense. That. I definitely agree with that. I was like, okay, was trying to figure out where the hell this was going. Yeah, and then the whole time. You, yeah, and then once you get into it, you're like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Artwork was good. Yeah. Story yeah. was intriguing. Well, it's uh, Alex Maleev, right? Uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, Jesus Hervas. Oh, okay. How did I do that? I oh, Melee right. did um, did Leviathan. Yeah. Ah. We'll get to that in a moment. Mm. Uh, but speaking of DC, we've got Amethyst first. Now, this is... Did you read this? I did, as a matter of fact. This Inter- is our introduction. This, this, this is, is a lot of people's introduction to this character. Yeah. But yeah. she's been around for a while. She's been introduced a few times. Quite a few. Yes. I, now, I, I'm I, kind of getting like a She-Ra slash Sailor Moon slash... Kitty girl thing. Yeah. yeah, that kind of vibe. Uh, which uh, I'm okay with. Doesn't work for me. Oh, no, it, I don't I don't know that we are the target, target demographic yeah, here. That's what doesn't work for me. And yeah. that's okay. Is it? Because... I mean, us being not being the target demographic does not make this a bad book. Hmm. I enjoyed this book. It's a, it's a cool book. It's basically a girl who uh, she grows up on Earth with her parents, her surrogate parents that she thinks are her parents, uh-huh. until her you know she comes into her adolescence into puberty, and she realizes that she's a princess from another world called Gem World. She's Princess Amethyst, mm-hmm. and you know she like controls this whole kingdom. And she's best friends with Princess fucking Turquoise and shit. And there's all sorts of different gemstones that run different kingdoms, it and seems. And the villains are this opal. Yeah. And there's, you know, villains named after different gemstones as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe somehow less precious gems or whatever. I never really studied that whole precious gems versus semi-precious gems versus whatever. Mm-hmm. I always just liked rubies because they were cool. I really like rubies. Mm -hmm. I do. Now, my birthstone or anything like that, honestly, January's got a pretty fucking boring birthstone in Garnet. Yeah. Nobody fucking cares about Garnet. (laughs) But thanks to a fantasy novel called The Ruby Knight from David Eddings. Anybody out there read that? I like rubies. David Eddings read his stuff? David Eddings, yes, I have. You Have you read the Bulgarian, the Malorian? Uh, I've read quite a few things. I would have to go back and look at the covers of the book to remember what I read. If that, like, This is before the days of audiobooks on YouTube, bro. Does the name Bulgara or, Pol- or Belgarev ring about? Yes, it does. So, yeah. That's why I, I'm like, I gotta go back and look at the, the covers. I read that book in the wrong order. Really? I read the last two books... I filled in the stuff that happened in the whole series first. And I was like, oh, wait, there was a series. And I went back and read it. Yeah, he was, he was pretty way. infamous for writing like three to four book series. Yes. Mm. Yep. He was good. Anyway. Yes, he, yeah, you know, he, he was fucking really good. Very entertaining. I got quite a few right up there in the old uh, shelf library. You can feel free to take a look. But nevertheless, like, so Amethyst gets to her home world of Gem World on her birthday. And all of her people are gone. Everybody's gone. Her kingdom yeah. is in fucking decimation. Yeah. Yeah. And her best friend is acting like she doesn't know her. A little like, hostile, what, even. Yeah, it's a yeah. little bit of a bitch. Yeah. Like, you're, like, what the fuck is up with you? But she knew, like, some shit was up. Like, you're not acting right. Some shit is up. Yeah. Could this be fucking Lord Opal or, you know, whatever? Like, some shit is up here, clearly. And she sets out to solve this mystery. Mm hmm. And befriends a a warrior who has a pet giant caterpillar. Because why not? Because why the fuck not? Yeah. Like this this kind of it gave me a vi- like a vibe of a mix of like like I said Shira with like Chronicles of Narnia, you know. Okay. Because All it's right. like yeah. you know like how much time actually passed from when she went back to Earth to celebrate her birthday with her surrogate parents. To go back. When was the last time she was on Gem World? Right. Versus when well, was the last I mean, time she was yeah, on Earth? Yeah. It's and a how does this universe. relate to potentially the other series in which she appeared? Because this is not her first appearance, not by a long shot. Mm. So you're sticking around? Uh, you know what? I'm going to stick around for three on this just because I think my niece, who's about just about to turn eight, I think she would really like this. 
The one and thing- I would like to kind of just give it the old Uncle Pete test run. You know, make sure that, that we don't delve into anything too serious or, or dark. anything like too, let's say, PG-13-ish that she's not ready for. But at this point, I'm ready to recommend this for anybody with a daughter coming of age. Because I think it's a, gr- I think it's great. Mm-hmm. Like, I, yeah, one thing's for the, sure, the artwork is phenomenal. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really, really nice. Like, this may not be a basement book, but this is this is not a bad book by any stretch. This mm. is really entertaining. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I actually think it's lo- great I, for like parents with girls that, that you, you want to yeah. read your kid a fucking comic book or you know get kids into comic books this is fucking perfect yeah and i think i think the character design is pretty cool especially for i think his name is onyx if i'm not mistaken is it, it's either opal or onyx the bad guy mm. yeah opal opal oh opal with the stripes okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like i i love the character design because you know for for him for some reason it just looks fucking weird enough to work you know mm-hmm. so that's that's pretty cool i'll bet i'll bet whoever writes this has a ton of crystals in them uh, that would be Amy Reader, writer and artist. So okay. good on you, Amy. What is Leviathan Dawn? I didn't get to ra- I didn't get to read this shit. This? I did. It's a mistake. Really? It's another event starting when they're not even done with dark metal, and the whole. Wait, they're not done with dark metal. They finished dark metal, but they're bringing it into the regular um, right, the current right. book against the, all these villains risen crap, and that's still going on. So now they're going to bring in Leviathan, which is just more hullabaloo. Isn't and... Leviathan, like, Leviathan's not, like, one guy. He's a... Yes this and no. Group... There, there, there is Leviathan, the main guy, but we know his name now. And mm-hmm. there's a Leviathan, the massive spy organization that he took over. Because really what he did, he took over almost all the spy agencies in D.C. And then combined them as one. Yeah. So who is this guy? He he's Leviathan. Something Shaw. Yeah, his name is Leviathan. Matt Shaw, Mark, Mark Shaw. Yeah, I think so. his name is. Apparently, um, Steve. Does it Steve Trevor uh, yeah. knows him or yeah. knows of him? Yeah. It's, and he gets busted out of jail. Because everybody gets thought busted out of jail. he was Leviathan. Because right. it must have been somebody in the spy world to go against and conquer uh-huh. the spy world. Right. And Leviathan was originally Talia Ghoul's thing. Uh-huh. So he took it yes. from her, which is impressive. Yeah, which is apparently the legacy of the League of Assassins. Yeah. It's 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 a lot. It's Bendis. He's trying to build up some big thing. There was already a Leviathan miniseries. This is the second one. You know. So, so we, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Like I didn't even mean for that to happen. <laughs> that was just like okay. that was just great timing. Given given Bendis's writing style on a book like this, it's kind of a stretch for him because this is really more a book that should be for the likes of Matt Fraction or Ed Brubaker. Because they're, they're better at writing shit like I this. would agree with you on Brubaker. I don't know why you brought Fraction's name into this fucking I don't know. I play. mean, I think it's just kind of crazy enough where he would, he could write it well. But, well, we've but all Brubaker been wrong for before. sure. Huh? I said, well, we've all been wrong before. True. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of digging it because it's like, okay... Interesting twist where you you want to make, you know, all of the spy organizations in D.C. basically become Hydra. Yeah, but, in a it's, sense. It's, but it's a little done spy dash. stuff before and better. Greg Rooker, um, Checkmate, that was way better. Mm. Um, I don't know, Bendis, like, really, dude. Well, isn't outing Superman enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> you said there was a book coming out next well, week that was right that if you know I I dropped Superman like as a whole to, to most of us did um but next week comes Super, um, Superman villains number one it's, it's a one shot so why the hell they call him number one I don't know well they did heroes last week so it, two yeah, weeks ago where the heroes dealt with is coming out now, the, now it's the villains revelation turn, now. now it's the villains and okay. How are they going to feel so about? It's, so Clark it's basically. I'm very intrigued by this. So it's basically going to be a reactionary video. Yeah. Uh, comic book. I'm all for that. That's the kind of shit like that's that inner workings of the comics realm that I long for. Is like what is going on in your head when some shit happens? Mm. Yeah, let's let's be real. As my, I'm looking forward to next week's book. I have a feeling I'm going to love it because I love villains. Mm. Lois Lane should be dead already. Mm-hmm. As soon as you, the moment you find out, and she's, that, and she's involved in Leviathan. Yeah, the moment which, you find out Clark Kent is Superman slash Kal El. All right, how do we get to this guy? Kill his wife. 
That's here's, it. Here's the thing. He can't be everywhere at once. He's he, not that super. He cannot. However, if you if you want him to kill you, that's what you do. Yeah. You kill Lois. Kingdom. If you want him to kill you, if you have a death wish, Kingdom Come. you take out yes. Lois. Yeah. Simple Joker as that. Killed her and then... Forget not Kingdom Come. Uh, Injustice. You're thinking of. No, didn't somebody kill her in Kingdom Come? I don't remember. I got to read. I thought she was Kingdom already Come. dead in Kingdom Come because I don't was remember. Like years later and. Anyway, she's been dead before in the comic books. Yeah. Um, killed by her villains, and he went apeshit. I need yeah. to reread Kingdom Come, yeah. actually. That was well. still I one still, of the great... I, I haven't yeah. read that in 25 years. And I have the prestige version, which is signed by Alex Ross. You should yeah. really bring that here so we could all read that. Yeah. Yeah. Get, getting to meet Alex Ross was fucking awesome. Yeah, he's a great dude. Yeah. yeah. You're a really nice Super guy. Super awesome dude. Alex, I, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but we love you. We do. From Magnetic, we've got Nils the Elementals, issue one. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed this immensely. This was long-winded, but... Yeah, it is. Now, I first want yeah. to say that the initial reaction that I had to the title of this book was... Attention! Attention! Nils is dead! Nils is dead, fuckhead! Die Hard? Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't remember that. God, I Nils is you. one of the henchmen, or one of, I think his yes. main henchmen, right? One of the main guys. Yeah. Now I have a machine gun. But meanwhile, Game of Thrones. I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. What? Meanwhile, Game of Thrones earlier. I just have no idea. No. If you're not making a reference like pre-1990, chance I'm not going to know what you're talking about. How does that make sense? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This is a really fantastic book. It is long. Mm. It is basically... Uh, futuristic story where you have this one kingdom called Cyan mm -hmm. yes. that is wiping out all of the natural order of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. These cute little natural order of things. Yeah. 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 These cute little forest spirits, these little guys, that these little spirit things They're that inhabit hunters. everything. Yeah. They are the reason that nature continues its cycle. When they die, they inhabit something else. Uh, and when that dies, they inhabit something else. And so on and so forth. And this kingdom of Cyan has figured out a way to capture these little fuckers. Mm. They are just cute little little fuckers. Just yeah. little stick figure guys. The, cute little fuckers. You know? They're great. I like the characters. Of this. The, yes. There, there's... This I'm is an this RPG. Is like this is Final Fantasy. This is better than Final Fantasy. Well, no, what, what I'm saying, good. what I'm saying is like the similarities that there are similarities in these stories, and this, I, I'm pretty. I don't know if this is based off of any kind of Norse mythology or whatever, but it seems like they, it's a they bit do of touch like, on some Norse, mm -hmm. right? Exodus so it was mentioned. I'm trying. To, I'm. Th I'm wondering if the some of the concepts throughout the whole Final Fantasy realm have been drawn from stuff like this, and this is a bit more of a kind of like a concrete telling of the story but it's similar to a situation in in certain final fantasy games where you have magitech where they're basically pulling spirits from their mm -hmm. earth to power their machine you're right yes kingdom of science doing the exact same thing final and, fantasy 6 yeah you're yeah. right okay didn't, so i i didn't pick up on that but you're right um but the cool thing about this is that you have this tribe you have this tribe of people who live in the forest you know, and which reminded me of Witcher, the females. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then the son Nils, um, apparently, you know, after sniping out the prince of Cyan, I didn't expect that. I didn't I, expect that either. I was, I was like, he just legitimately grabbed the gun while he, the girl and his dad were arguing. Like the shoe bang. Do it. That was an yeah. impetuous youth kind of move, and like, oh snap, this motherfucker did it. Shit, I didn't think that was actually gonna work. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I did not expect you to do that. And, and honestly, kid's a pretty good shot. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah shot yeah. him in the neck. Shot him right in the fucking neck. All he wanted yeah. was a hawk. Yeah. All he Poor guy a wanted a yeah. bird. Like, I mean, listen, after seeing... And his dad brought him on a fucking big-ass adventure, and, well, what do you get? No falcon. And now... We don't know where his dad is, whether he's captured or dead. Most likely captured. Probably captured. A lot of people want to die soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's Science a lot of people pissed. dead already. Yeah. Yep. Yo, this is a really good book. This is so indie that you've probably never heard of it. Mm. 
So you're going to have to Google it and then go ask your LCS about this. Magnetic Comics nils the elementals. Yeah. Absolutely one of the best books. I, I honestly I really enjoyed tomorrow, but this was runner up for my book of the week. This one was and it's book extra of the week. long. It's like two it's to a, three issues in one. It's, it's like, like a, almost yeah, sixty 50 pages. pages. Yeah. 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 Um and I, I super good. I, I liked I I don't know why, but I kinda like that the girl Alba Ooh, yeah, kind yes. of has Niobe vibes yeah, about the face it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And also the the, the of, uh, mystical connection comics, with kind of the gods and all that stuff, yeah. And then the cool one of the coolest things is this will probably play out in some way later. Nils gets a vision from the three gets, goddesses. of the three goddesses. Now oh yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot more to this oh, than oh, has already met the. They're eye. building yeah. a huge mythology. In the yes. 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 Oh yeah. I'm cool with that. And I and I, I like that they have the 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 gods or goddesses of the elementals like conversing like in the ethereal plane. Uh huh. Yeah, because they're so the ones get that are sending out all these little yeah. guys to. You, you know. get a bit of an omniscient viewpoint of not only the main characters but also the gods that they worship and yeah. what's going on in both characters' minds. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how is it going to play out? And you're like, oh, it's going to play out just as fucked up as I thought it was going to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this was so good. And it was like, it was really the start, like the first few battles of an epic role playing game. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. I could definitely see myself playing this shit at the age of like 13 on a Super Nintendo. Sure. Without a doubt. I mean, it's how isn't that how every single classic RPG starts out? Pretty You're much. The main character who is a, a boy or girl who has just come of age, all of a sudden... And some, like their dad some or somebody, dead, yeah, has to teach them some shit, yeah. And you have to go on a quest to rescue them. Yep. All right, so also from Magnetic, we've got Rise of the Zellfire of Bark and Sap. I didn't get a chance to read this. Me neither. This is really longer. <laughs> Yeah, this is like an almost graphic novel kind of shit right in the beginning. Yeah, which is fine. I'm cool with it. But it's only Um, number one. It doesn't end. Um, I don't know when does the next one come out. This is um translated from French. Okay. Ooh. Um. All right. So in this world, uh, certain things bring out certain traits in you. If you go through a traumatic experience, you uh, you're a, a zephyr. In which case, you you have some kind of special skill and stuff like that. But also, there's a, a darker version of it where um, if you just, I think, mean or something evil, you also get a power. Like, this guy used to torture people so much, and now his touch is torture. So, in this book, it's just a collection of people with those powers doing things and fighting each other. And it's a rich history. It's drawn a little cartoony, but it's good for what it is. It's a fast read. It isn't talky. It's funny. It's um, there is there's some love in it. It's uh, when you have the time to sit down and read it, read it. It's not a long read, but it's not something you're gonna read right before the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though it is 100 plus pages. <laughs> but it's really? good though. Yeah, Holy I like shit. it. Next up, let's get through Marvels. We've got 2020 Force Works. Okay, no, I read it. I did. I did. You should have because it was on your list. Yes, I know. Um. All right, so you remember the whole Machine Wars thing that started out with the Iron Iron Man? So now we've got a team to fight the, mach- the Machine Robot Uprising. This is the first time we've seen Force Works. Yes, it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, you said it's not the first it's time. Yeah. yeah, but this is the first time we've seen this Force Works. Because they do a good job of introducing these people. Yeah. Oh, you've boy. got uh, Solo. Remember Solo? Who quits they, they after du- half an where issue? Where the fuck did they dig him up from? Exactly. You've got I haven't seen War him Machine, since, like, the pages of Spider-Man Maria and... Hill, this guy called Gauntlet. Is it Maria Hill? Is that, Maria is that actually this chick, uh, Quake? No, I thought it was Maria Hill. Uh, as I perused that, I No, it's like, Maria Hill. The, the hand Quake. Yeah, no, Maria Hill. Wow, she's been demoted hard. So is War Machine. Well, War Machine gets no love. Anymore. Yeah, no, this is like a whole team of people who are also somehow rams. affected by robotics, but not... But U.S. Agent is in this. Yeah, U.S. Agent. I don't. I don't understand that either. Solo too. Like you, you're not affect. Like, but somehow, I don't know. These people are supposed to be affected by robotics Solo's and like going a up against light. robotics. Like, what the fuck is he doing? He is machines. Punisher Light. That's exactly what he is. And the, at the end of the issue, 
like they're they're basically still fighting like the whole machine man uprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they go up against an army of Deathlocks. There you go. Again? Again. Oh, that hasn't been done ten times already. So there you go. I don't know where this series is going, but I'm not going to follow it until the very end, and then I'll you know, figure it out. Like, shit like that makes me wonder if they do shit like this just to fuck with us. They do. Completely. Because I saw the checklist in the back of this book, and, you know, Rescue has a book coming out next week, I believe. Uh-huh. Have fun reading that. Nope. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Down the list, you stop. And That's a Gwyneth Paltrow book. She'll be busy steaming her vagina while I'm reading it. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> you heard about the vagina that. smelling candles she's selling? No, I've not actually. It sold out like this. I'm gonna it tell you right is. now, vagina smelling candles are probably better than fucking McDonald's Big Mac and Quarter Pounder and Chicken Nugget smelling candles. One's gonna make you fat. The other's gonna make you horny. I don't know which one's worse. Definitely. Come home. I would come much home. rather my house smell like pussy <laughs> than McDonald's. Yeah, you come home and go, I smell sex and Anyways, candy. Not- what the fuck does a steamed vagina smell like? I want to get them candles. Down the list in this I'm 2020 gonna get them event, fucking candles for the basement. <laughs> there's- and we're going to do a review on it, I promise you. There's a book called I Wolverine. Ah. Why is there a book called I Wolverine? I don't know. It's going to be Wolverine's version of Mind Comp. You're asking stupid <laughs> questions. <laughs> See now, I'm just like I will ring. Like, does now, it go me, with, like Abacare? I, I have to ask you. A question, <laughs> I have to ask you a very important question. Oh, Jesus, it's more like I robot. Do you have an eBay Apple account? Products. Oh my God, yes, but I haven't opened it in at least a handful of years. All right, you have an eBay account, right? I sure do. All right, so I gave up eBay and Amazon for Lent, which is because crazy. I like the crazy. idea. I'm not a very religious person, but I like the idea of testing myself every year. One year I gave up drinking. One year I gave up soda. Soda was exponentially harder. And was it really? Yes, it was. Yeah. Wow. It says a lot about Did sugar you give addiction. Did you a pizza once? No. That's not, that's not being ridiculous. <laughs> you gave up something no, food-wise. No. No? Nope. You're you never, that wait, up. you never gave up macaroni for life. Nah, that's ridiculous. I know better. I know we got to play to my strengths here. Like, let's let's be fucking realistic. This is a hard thing to do. No Amazon or eBay. You telling fucking me? The first day I decided to do it, I broke the extension cord on my headphones. You have an spare extension cord for <laughs> headphones? Like, you're a fucking band guy. You must have a spare wait, extension cord. A, a spare extension cord for headphones? Yeah. Like an actual like three prong prong plug? No, just like some cord? shit that goes into the computer and comes out with a little fucking hole in it that I can stick the headphones in. I might actually. Yeah, if you do, let me know. Okay. Here's the thing: <laughs> more than likely, it's a Mac device. Yes. We live in Williamsburg slash Greenpoint. Yes. That's an Apple store not that far away. No, I could go buy one. They- I know. Contrary but, um, to popular belief, they don't have a ton of Apple They stores. have I mean, shit no, no, in the no, actual no. Apple Store. They have nothing. Like, order it online. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> you can order it off of Apple.com. Apple.com. Yeah, I guess I could. <laughs> I'm, try- I'm really trying to avoid the whole mail order thing. You know? Like, oh. the whole- I'm-, I'm trying okay, my best. Okay. Like, I if I can you. find it I in the you. store, it's different. But Best Buy. Maybe, best Buy yeah. will definitely Is it one on 5th Avenue or 40-something street? Or did that I don't down? know, but I do got a gift card for Best Buy. See, there you go. Yeah. Nevertheless, See that? Uh, in the event that I can find, because I know this shit has got to be on eBay, <laughs> in the event that I can find a uh, Gwyneth Paltrow Vag-flavored candle, I'm going to send it to one of you motherfuckers, send and it, you're going to buy it. it for me. Sent it, yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> Vag-flavored candle. <laughs> 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 I promise not to lick the candle on anything but a live show. <laughs> Somebody actually in the in the <laughs> periscope actually asked why is this why is the vagina scented candle seventy five bucks? It's seventy five dollars. <laughs> yeah. That shit better really smell like I mean, fucking listen, pussy. I was just gonna say that. I, that's kind of that's probably and the ideally of the price you pay for good pussy. Motherfucking ideally, that candle better smell like nothing. Fucking nothing. A good clean vagina should is a yeah. smell fucking all. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, and fucking it's underrated. The only time it should is when the juices start flowing. Some sh- yes. Yeah. And by then, yo, one of the greatest memes that I've seen this week, oh man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I set him up for this. I'm sorry. I've seen both versions. 
The first was when your pussy get wet and it, and there's no, like apparently no reason for it. And the other was when your dick get hard and there's no reason for it. And it was like when your dick get hard and you're like, what? What is it, boy? What do you see? <laughs> Fucking classic. Yeah, it's fucking good. Yeah. I love I saw drinking. That earlier today. I was laughing my balls I off. love drinking. <laughs> Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. I expected garbage. I expected complete by oh, This was cool as shit. It was shit. good. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's another stupid government subgroup that they created and, and, yes but that's it's yeah. comics but whatever yo the kid the little teenage kid that whooped their ass is fucking cool while and, praising them yes, yes. like you guys it's are like, my I'm heroes I'm really sorry that I have to beat the shit out of you but and I have to beat you. the shit out of you yeah and, and like, like I don't want to kill you but I'm going to and he's like so come oh, but me. you know like at the like the last minute like uh, I'm gonna give you guys a chance and the next time we meet then I'm gonna kill you yeah I like it. Yeah. I love. I really do. And the fact she that they're both like, we're getting our ass kicked. Oh, you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> and a drunk agent over but there. Why right is now. he so fast? I I fucking love it. Yeah. The the comedy is perfectly on. Oh my god! Point. The whole cat joke. Yes. yes. What happened with Misty that she can't see yes. the cat? I want to know. I want to know too. I want to know because a cat that can keep its cool when there's gunfire flying around. And still stay on Winter Soldier, Soldier's shoulder, yeah. which is tough to say 10 times fast. I dare you. Um, especially in your state. No. <laughs> and he's, she's got a problem with Misty Knight, of all people? I'm intrigued. Yeah. I want to know. This was way better than it had any right to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was expecting some Disney Plus setup crap. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. this is good. Like, yeah. It's like, no, this is some sick shit. Our work's decent. It's a fun book. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that it probably will set up at least some shit between these two for the Disney Plus series, which now I think is premiering in August. I think this. I'm one. not. I'm not. Yo, I'm not even thinking about that. That's not too far away. Too far away. I got Alter Carbon. And yep. and Star Wars to worry about these days. Yep. Star Wars ain't having it for a minute. Oh, you talking about Clone Wars? Clone Wars. Yes. Ah, yes. that's just sorry. It's the weekly, you bastard. Oh. You jinxed it. Last week you said no, it's I'm more likely. It. Oh, oh, you. I'm the one you jinxed it. it. Yeah. Oh, both piece of bastards. Either way, they so you getting like one episode per one week. One episode a week. So is that gonna last for twenty two weeks? No, it's not that. It's like thirteen episodes max. Oh, all right. Okay. In which case, I'm gonna restart the whole series again. Right. So and. It, that that's an interesting dynamic because you know you still have Netflix dropping entire seasons. Yes, Castlevania is coming right around the corner. Oh man, first weekend in March. Yeah, have you I finished this shit. I I'm halfway Get th- on that. I'm halfway through season two. All right, halfway through season all right, two. you're almost there. Yeah, I'm okay. almost there. Have Good man. Alter Carbon at all? No. No, I even I haven't seen Alter Carbon. I know there's supposed to be great tits in Alter Carbon. I gotta get on. <laughs> and violence. <laughs> and tits. The problem is. They just brought The Office back to Netflix. No! What are you doing? <laughs> I'm clearly we re- rewatching The Office. Have you seen um, well, John Wick 3? No. <laughs> What's the next book? I watched, I watched <laughs> It Chapter 2, if that makes you feel no, any better. No, no, don't. What's the next <laughs> book? Damn it. I'm like halfway through The Shape of Water. That's that's a complicated movie to watch. It's Guillermo del Toro being extra. Yeah, like mad extra. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all right though. You gotta watch that shit in spades. It's like yeah, I watched it twice. Yeah, you watched that shit whole shit twice. Yeah, the whole shit uh-huh. at once. He watched yeah. the whole shit. No way. Yo, it bugs me when I have to stop watching something. I got I gotta you walk know, away like... from that sometimes. Like. Sometimes, like even when I'm editing and shit, like sometimes you gotta just put the shit no, down and editing, walk the fuck that's away. A, a process, but watching a movie and then stopping and coming back to it. Sometimes I can just get it. mad, stressed out, because especially like the the fucking mute girl, like you're annoying me. Just talk, like, and I don't want to be reading. You know, fucking the third base coach fucking telling the <laughs> squid man what to do. <laughs> you know what? You know what? <laughs> she, she's the reason that Astros have been stealing signs. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Pete's Basement Show, folks. We pull no punches. By the way, fuck you, Houston. And the, the drunker we get, the worse we get. All right, here we go. Fantastic Four Grim Noir. That's the next book. I didn't get a chance to read this, but I was really looking forward to it. The title alone had me intrigued. I didn't have time, but... Um, it's him dealing with his thingness, his, his trauma, his misery. He's always been a miserable, blue-eyed kid. Yeah. And, you know, like, I understand, you're a rock. You have the smartest man in the world as your best friend. And he can't and, do shit! Which is one of the most annoying plots of Fantastic Four history. Right. Yes. Like, really? He's never been able to figure that out. We could jump from universe to universe. You literally recreated a universe and all this other stuff. You face down Galactus, but you can't fix my rocky skin. You can't make it so that he can... So this is just him dealing and with that. It's dealing with that, but it has an effect in that it brings um, despair into his life. Yeah. The, the villain. Uh-huh. And... Oh, not yeah. despair. And it was interesting. Oh, wait, there's a villain named Despair? Yes. yes. Really? Isn't... Yeah. Isn't he, like, related to Mephisto in some way, shape, Something or form? Like that. Yeah. It's from that realm. Oh, okay. Very interesting. So he's like playing on his depression and yes. and everything else. Yeah. And that just makes him probably more powerful. Yeah. Because that's like his emotion and shit. And you know, it turns out like he's had some horrible stuff happen to him. Oh hell yeah. So I mean so like, it's very, everybody it's very, talks very, about Spider Man being the hard luck hero. But this is it's very ben much Grimm. like an origin of Ben Grimm, the shit that we didn't know about kind of thing. I mean, it could be. I, I kinda wish I Yeah, you know, it is it's the origins, like his, his dad was a douche. Uh he said it like Everybody thinks it's the Hulk that's hit me the hardest, and it isn't. It's referring to his father beating him. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, that's a heavy line. It is a heavy yeah. line. I was like, yeah. damn. And then, um, pretty much, he just says everything he's done has been to run away, and so he ended up in a rock. Not for nothing, even the, the earth behind him. Uh, th this is written by Ron Garney, who yeah. was on Spider Man for quite some time mm. as an artist. Yes. No less. Like the, so yeah, I remember. I, I remember don't, when he was drawing Spider Man. Yeah, and he like was, it was really day. great. Really good yeah, stuff. I mean, you talk about 10, 15 years ago. Sure. I don't remember ever reading anything that he wrote. Mm, so this is pretty wild. I have to look into more on what he's written. Mm. Like, that's that's wild. Yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was good. Uh, I'm, the title I'm definitely going to fucking hit this up. Because I, I would have been, ju been just as cool with a film noir. I was thinking that. Especially I thought they next should. Next week, Spider Man No War Volume 2 comes out. Oh, Is okay. it only Volume 2? I thought they were up to Volume 3 by now with him. I don't know. I lose track. But I, I thought it was going to be like some 1920s Elseworlds kind of shit with, you know, like the Spider Man No War. Uh, That'd be interesting. Period. Too. Like a, 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 a really Fantastic like Four style. Oh, yeah. 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 Some like even like a Rocky Marciano kind of thing, of who would have existed around the same time. They gave him Rocky looking skin. Or Anything, yeah. 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 But all right, this is really cool. It was. I'm, I'm going to check this out. Thing. It was surprisingly good. I have definitely got to read that because because cool. the thing is, I mean, I don't know, I I don't know off the top of my head, has Ben Grimm got ever gotten a book on his own? Oh, uh, think so. Like maybe he a mini or something. Have. Yeah, mini. Uh, aside yeah, sure. from a mini, though. But no, like, I don't think ever uh, like an ongoing or anything. For a while he did with Human Torch? Yes. That's, yeah. That, yeah. He well, doesn't, yeah. That, there's a stretch. It's, what's it's up with uh, Jean Grey and Emma Frost? All right. First of all, what's the full title? All right. That would be Giant Size X-Men, Jean Grey and Emma Frost. Stop it, Mom. <laughs> first of all, this wasn't Giant Size. Second, that refers oh. to Giant Size X-Men number one, which brought us the second X-Men team, which was a beautiful book. So, and yes. it's as far as everybody's yeah. concerned, this is misleading. Yes. This is not the first time they've done that. Uh-huh. So okay, um, this is Marvel with the X Men though. They they've done this yeah. shit before. This is um, under Hickman. Hickman wrote this. There's not a lot of dialogue in this. Uh, something happened to Storm. I forget what, and they're dealing with it, and they go into her mind, Emma and Jean Grey at the same time, um, and it's just that dealing with her, what's in her mind and how to deal with it. And at one point, they come up to this two big giant cats. In her mind, I guess, actual projections of her defense mechanism or whatever. Uh. And they look at Jean Grey and she uses her powers to show, look, I'm her friend. They look at Emma and Emma's like, no. <laughs> at which point those two cast into snakes and attack her. It was nice. I liked it. It was interesting. But it was like, why? What, what's next? Are you, are I mean, you are you saying like why is she not making an effort to show that she's a friend? 
No, 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 no. Or, I, I, no, you're right. Um, Emma isn't. Right. They have a con- rough relationship. Same Emma right. doesn't really. She's not one to cloud the issues, mm-hmm. so to speak. Like if no. if y'all don't get along, Emma's just gonna be like, yeah, I don't no, fucking like you. I don't. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I respect that at, at, for her as a character. In yes. the Current Marvel um, X Men universe. Storm has been downgraded from a leader and a uh, so she's still a powerful mutant and she's still had um one of the members of the council, I believe. She's still an Omega level? Yeah. Yeah. But um she's, she's uh, a, a member leader. of the Marauders led by Kitty Pride. Okay. And she's there to protect Kitty because for some reason she can't enter Krakoa and because of the love they right, have for each yeah, other. Right, yeah, we know about for that. For each other, she's there to protect her. And she don't trust Emma. Who uh-huh. controls uh, um Kitty's Pride's adventures. So this ended with um they're just saying, okay, she's in trouble, she's screwed over, and she needs help. Okay. Uh, is it going to be a second one? I didn't get that vibe from this. I think this is just a one shot and it's going to go back to the books. If they did that, and then that's just a waste. And they'll deal with the story Yeah, from yeah there. It, seems, it seems like a very odd concept. To, they're probably just introducing like points that. that they're going to reference in the main story yes. later on. I would rather they just stick to the main stories. Don't, yeah. don't pull out another book. Yeah, I mean, for, for that to be kind of a one shot is very bizarre. Next up, we got Xenoscope's Conspiracy, Area 51. I had higher hopes for this book. This takes Why? place during... Because I, I just... I wanted a cool conspiracy book. I really did. And this takes place during the raid of Area 51, which happened back in September. It was, the raid scene was done perfect. The, the raid scene was actually done really perfect, which yeah. was a bunch of people stormed Area 51 and then did fuck all nothing. Uh, cause nobody had the balls to try and get shot by fucking actual government guards who had a shoot to kill order. Mm. Except for that one old lady who was mad gangster who just walked through the, the whole shit. Yeah, no, you can Google that. Like, there was just one old lady who just walked right up and went through the guard post. I don't know what happened to this lady afterward, whether she was escorted off or whatever. But, nevertheless, she just walked up and whoop, went through. And people are filming. Like, they ain't, they ain't even got the balls to follow her. They're just like, yo, she really went. She's just walking up. That's what it is. Well, interesting. So, props to you, old lady. This one. She's probably hired by the military to do it. Yeah. I'm hey, kidding. maybe. Maybe. Military trolling everybody. The fact of the matter is, this shows people... Uh, A small group of people who managed to, with the aid of fake military IDs, sneak their way past the guards onto the military base of Area 51. Which at this point, if you're naive enough to think that any of the government is actually still hiding shit at Area 51, you're mistaken. Because the fact that the public knows all the fuck about it means they moved everything. Yep. Like, even if, let's say, when the public found out that this place is really real, like, oh, shit, it's not just an abandoned fucking place in the desert, that's, it's a real military base. Let's say that happened by accident, and shit was revealed on the internet. The government's like, oh, fuck, boop, and, like, the next day, everything that mattered was gone. Move to another shadow site that we'll never see for another 50 years. Nevertheless, this book takes it as if none of that happened. So these people sneak onto the fucking military base and they get inside and they're looking at alien spacecrafts. So the they, Falcon in there? The oh, Falcon, yes, I did. A Star Trek ship? Yes, how amusing. How fucking amusing. Yeah, it was, it was a bad I joke. expected somewhat better. I don't know why, because it's Xenoscope, and I should have expected something a bit more, I guess, lighthearted, but. The fact that you're just you're but, touting but conspiracies. If, you, if you're going to do that, go full blown comedy parody. Right. If you, you know? if you're gonna do that, go comedy. Right. But don't, don't expect me to fucking make look it silly, at make it stupid in the fun. background of yeah. Like I I don't want to see the Millennial Falcon in the background and be like oh it's kind of funny and then you try to get serious where you're fucking like either rescuing people you're seeing fucking clones get dissected. Or whatever is going on while you're deep in this military base. And then you've got ninjas running around inexplicably to fucking kill these people. 
what? Yeah, it's just it's off the rails. It's fucking Xenoscope. It's like I oh, I honestly they should just stick to monsters and yeah. tits. Honestly, like sometimes Xenoscope will surprise you and be like, "Hey, yeah. here's some cool shit." And this this is like such quintessential Xenoscope that like I just can't even fuck with y'all, yo. It's like, what the fuck were you thinking? They were thinking the conspiracy nuts like you would jump on it. No, I'm not. I <laughs> I expect more intelligence from my conspiracy shit. I know you should. You got one issue. I appreciate that. <laughs> this this is the kind of shit that leads people like you to look at people like me like we're crazy. Oh, sweetie, that has been done for a while now. <laughs> Pete, Ramon's been looking at you like you was crazy for that. But I'm not years. crazy. I'm not. I know shit. And it's just a question of I finding the right the audience game. to explain it all. Sound a little like Joker there. Happy Ledger's Joker. Say what? You sound a little bit like Heath Ledger's Joker there. He did. That's scary. That I'm not. Might, I'm not. That I'm might crazy. be one of the nicest I'm things not. you've ever said to me. As long as you don't not. pull out a pencil, we're all good. No, <laughs> I'm not about to do that. That was an awesome You want to see a magic trick? We don't deal no. with this now. Soon a little uh, gamble here will be able to get a nickel for his grandma. Do I see one. a magic trick? No. <laughs> I'm going to uh, make this pencil disappear. I'm going to make this whole <laughs> bottle of whiskey disappear. Good luck. Sorry you're on this side, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless. <laughs> from Vault Comics, Finger Guns. This was a strange hey! book. <laughs> it was. But it was cool. I'm interested. Yes. It, it was like, wait, what? Okay, who? Whoa. See, now, if you were expecting a, an explanation from this, you're not getting it. But... Simply put, the fact is, this dude can just like fire a finger gun at people and actually kill and them? affect their emotions in an aggressive like, way. Them. Yes, uh, and he fires like a, a double barrel finger gun, and he gets people mad, like because there's reasons, and I should know this, to get mad every single day. People coming out of a parking lot and you almost get hit by a car. Like, yo, motherfucker, what are you doing? You watching where you're going or what? People fucking just doing anything. And they get mad at the reaction. Mm. Oh, you know, what happens? And then he meets this other girl who he encountered earlier on in the book. Who also fires a finger gun, but... Specifically, one finger. only one barrel mm. that makes people do the opposite. They're it's like, happy. oh, hey, uh, ah, you know, like, you were backing up. You probably didn't see us. It's it's cool, man. You know, be, be cool. Drive safe. Mm. Have, have a good night. Yeah. Interesting. So It is. And what we've established is that it's not two unique powers. It's the, same it's power. the barrel of the gun. The yeah. first barrel... Makes people happy, and the second barrel makes people angry. Well, and it's three, only one well, hand. Three and four. It's only one hand. Right. So you can't like the kid tries <laughs> both hands. Nice, nice. I just turn around. I see that. Very good. Well yeah. done. We haven't explored that aspect yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watch. Wait for that to happen. I love Vault. Yeah. They they just we're doing crazy. Come along for the ride. Come yeah, on. that's it. That's it. That's yeah, it. That's it. it. There is no explanation for this throughout the book. Why is this happening? Why can these kids do this? What is this fucking superpower? No. Here it is. They can do it. Let's have fun and see. Because you know what I like about this the most? Is it doesn't actually give the reader, us, the omniscient viewpoint nope. that we're used to. Yeah. We're discovering this shit... At the same time as the characters. Yeah. Why can they do this? We don't know. Uh, Let's go along with the characters and find out. That is that is an aspect of comics that is, I would say, rarely done. Yeah. It's and done often, even yeah. fewer times done correctly. Yeah. There's a certain confidence yes. when they do it. It's like... We, we, we're standing behind this because there are there. plenty of times where we'll read shit and be like yo just fucking tell us like this is ridiculous mm. especially when you try to 
you know, in terms of like the big two or or other guilty parties, they'll try to drag this motherfucker out way too much. Right. They'll try to take like a, a five a five or six issue mini into a twelve right. issue max. From what I'm seeing of this, this looks like it's like four issues or so. Probably. I'm I'm in love with that idea. Like yeah. I want an explanation. Even if it's a cockamamie explanation, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to. I don't even gotta know exactly what's happening. I just want to know how these two kids are dealing with it. Like we can it, deal with an origin in volume two. Yeah, I'm already yeah. on for volume yeah. two. And like this particular concept is is a, especially lends itself to it doesn't have to be this overarching enormous complex description exactly of how they got these abilities because it's so it just out of left field yeah it's just so out of left field that it's like okay the kids are just like all right well i got this and what do i do with it oh oh, we're we're done aren't we 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 are are. actually done all right so that that about wraps it up for this week's basement episode thanks everybody for tuning in you know what to do. Hit us up. Questions at PeachBasement.com. Facebook.com forward slash Pete's Basement. Instagram, Twitter, etc. At Pete's Basement. Yo, we still have the Art of Still Life signed by Todd M. Casey. We are giving that away. We will announce the winners next week. We have a trivia question wherein you can just write in your answer and potentially win the book. That question is... One of my favorite artists, Vincent Van Gogh, also known as Vincent Van Gogh, depending on how much of a pretentious asshole you want to sound when you pronounce his name. He was drinking some shit when he decided, let me cut off my own ear and paint my self-portrait. Well, he did that, and uh, then he presented the aforementioned self-portrait and the ear to someone. So, one, the main question is, what was he drinking when, after a three-day binge... This seemed like a good idea. Jameson. It's never a good idea. No, it's not Jameson, it's I not assure Jameson. you. No, I know Something a lot stronger. When did this seem like a good idea? Cutting off your own ear and painting it and your self-portrait. And, and then, then giving it, it to, to someone. Bonus question of who did he give it to and why? Now, I have seen a lot of different answers to this so far. So I'm not sure that I can accurately give out a a second prize answer. But at this point, I am really intrigued to hear other people's answers. Because so far from what I've seen, the people who have answered this trivia question have had different answers than I have. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting to see how history uh, just kind of jumbles itself around mm. you know when when you get too far back and there's really not any face-to-face hand-to-hand accounts so is what it is and pete has told us the answer for this after i have told you one answer week. and apparently yeah. that may not may or may not be the case anymore ah. uh so i would just like to hear People's answers, and I'll I'll throw in something either way to sweeten the deal on this contest. But I want to hear your answers of why he cut off his own ear and whom to whom did he give it to. Mm. It would be interesting. You can win a signed hardcover autographed copy of The Art of Still Life by Todd M. Casey. All you got to do is answer that question. Send your answers to questions at peachbasement.com. Next up, want to grab yourself a cool Peach Basement t-shirt? You know you do. Go on represent.com forward slash store forward slash Peach Basement. We've got PB t-shirts. We've got Breaking Nerd News t-shirts. We've got Zen Rockstar t-shirts. We've got hoodies. We've got tank tops. Everything that could possibly meet your wardrobe needs. Order up one. Send us a photo of you rocking the outfit. And we're going to post that shit up. On our 13th episode, we're going to have a nice little slideshow and we're going to shout everybody out that has sent us photos. Thank you to everyone who has already sent us pictures. If you have one, uh, just do us a favor. Send us a photo again, just in case. Like, I don't want anybody to miss out on having their photo shown just because I happen to lose a photo. So, send me a picture. Send me your picture in a Peach Basement shirt, in a Breaking Nerd News shirt, 
in a Zen Rockstar shirt, hoodie, tank top, what have you, send it to questions at PeteSbasement.com. This will forward to everyone, so everyone manages to get this. Thank you to all of our patrons. You are doing the God's works. You have afforded us a Mevo camera and many, many other things. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe to the Peach Basement YouTube. We put up a lot of stuff that is not always available on the live Periscope show. There's box openings. There's interviews. There's all sorts of stuff. There's outtakes. There's, there's a outtakes. lot of outtakes. There's outtakes and deleted scenes going up on the YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell while you're at it. Lots of cool stuff happening in PB Season 13. Can't believe it's Season 13. Mm. Wow. Two weeks. Yeah. Two more weeks. Holy we got a shit. really great episode coming for you. It's going to be fucking awesome. And we highly encourage you to watch this live and then watch it again on YouTube. And, uh, yeah. I'm just going to raise the rest of my whiskey glass. I finished the coffee glass, but I got a little bit of whiskey left. So, yeah, I'm going to finish that off. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. You are the reason we do this crazy-ass nonsense every week. Mm. We love hearing from you. And keep it up. Subscribe to the hall, by the way, just uh, in case I didn't mention that before. Sefi does a really great job of sending out the newsletter every single week. It's only one email, so you won't get spammed if you go and subscribe. PeachBasement.com forward slash the hall. You can see what me and Ramon are buying each week. And you get a cool newsletter on what's going on with the basement in the interim when you're not here with us. So subscribe. Literally one email a week. That's all. Yeah. All right. I'm a drink. Good night, folks. Pleasure. Always. Peach Basement is copyrighted 2020. Ripped Productions. All rights reserved. So go fuck yourself. This could potentially be disastrous somehow. I'm not sure how, but maybe. Yo. What? 13 years. <laughs> you never made me flan, son. I don't make flan. It's a pain in the ass to make. I'm I've aware. heard. Yeah. yeah. I'm worth it. <laughs> You're never going home. Okay. Hey, you are home. This is from the guy who's got a who's got a welcome mat that says, "Come in, relax, take, take your top, top off." off. <laughs> At least there's a picture of a beer cap going flying. <laughs> absolute, absolute says the basement is like Cheers in Hotel California. You're always welcome, but you probably can't leave. <laughs> that that might be the greatest analogy I have fucking ever heard. <laughs> take up yoga. That will help with that. I don't know, man. I don't know. Anybody can do it. Listen, are you breathing fire yet? No. Talk to me when you <laughs> Yoga fire. Yoga flame. Yoga. Marvel gives us that. Release the Florida men. The fucking what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Refresh my memory. <laughs> I'm actually trying. I would have excepted. Excepted? Ex shut the fuck up. <laughs> I will move the bacon out of the oh, plate. That's right. We're oh, talking wow. to Mr. O. I don't like when my bre <laughs> when my food touches other food. <laughs> <laughs>